Hello there, welcome back to my views and news. Viewers, for almost a week, we have been seeing reports by some pro erotian government uh, activists, journalists, uh, who are uh, claiming that uh, some world powers are working on regime change in Eratia. They want to change the government in Eratia. And a few hours ago, Eratian government-backed newspaper, Eratia has only one newspaper, published an article on its front page about regime change attempts by Western powers in Eratia. Question is, is there any truth behind these claims? Who is trying to change the regime in Eratia? Or Eratia is just trying to prove that uh, West is against uh, the country, but Eratia is strong, it can defend. Well, almost uh, a week ago, we saw the start of these allegations. It started after Amnesty International uh, issued a report a few days ago. Amnesty International accused Eritrean military of grave human rights abuses in Tigray, sexual abuses too, and some of these human rights abuses were allegedly committed after the signing of Pretoria deal. Amnesty relied on remote reporting. Obviously, Amnesty International investigators did not visit Tegarai, but Amnesty investigators interviewed people. And uh, based on these remote interviews, Amnesty International published a report. And then uh, we saw a report of UN Inquiry Commission. Uh, which has submitted a report to UN Human Rights Council this week. UN Inquiry Commission uh, experts uh, said that Eritrean military, Ethiopian National Defense Force, Amhara forces, Tigray fighters, all committed human rights abuses during a Tigray war. A pro eritrean government analyst concluded that uh, the specific allegations against Eritrean military were aimed at building a case to be taken to international criminal court against Eratia. That it is start of regime change operation. Western powers, they want to take the case of human rights abuses in Tigray to international criminal court. Eritrean military, Eritrean military leaders, Eritrean uh, president, they would be charged and there would be uh, then regime change operation will be conducted in Eritrea. And uh, Eritrean government uh, today confirmed what the pro Eritrean government activists have been saying in the last one week. So Eritrean government is also claiming that uh, West is trying to change the regime in Eritrea. Now, uh, firstly, Eritrea has been under sanctions, under immense Western pressure for years. It's not something new. Eritrea has gone through a lot. But at this point of time, can we say that Eritrea, Eritrean leaders can be dragged to international criminal court for a regime change there? Well. I think that West has tried lots of options against Eritrean president, Eritrean government. None of these options worked. Yes, West, US, they want to change the government in Eritrea. They don't know how to do it. They have tried to uh, back Eritrean neighbors against Eritrea. They have tried to build Eritrean opposition. They put Eritrea under sanctions, but they never succeeded in coming close to change the regime in Eritrea. Why? 
there are several reasons, but West tried several options. At this point of time, my understanding is that West, US don't have many options when it comes to how to handle, how to stop errata. Because the region is so volatile, so destabilized, that any operation, regime change operation against Eritrea would further destabilize the region. Civil war in Sudan, Ethiopia's civil war-like situation in Amhara, Ethiopia just out of two-year-long war, Yemen across the sea still uh, situation uh, not fully peaceful there, recovering gradually. Djibouti cannot be used for regime change operation by US because Djibouti has presence of several other players too, military presence. Uh, Somalia fighting Al-Shabaab. So you see that almost all Eritrean neighbors are uh, destabilized. And only option for West and US would be regime change in Eritrea through a neighboring country, through an Eritrean neighboring country. They cannot bring about any change in Eritrea directly. They have tried many options, they failed in the past. This option of taking uh, Eritrean military Eritrean leaders to International Criminal Court is, isn't going to work. I don't think, by the way, that West is trying this option because UN Inquiry Commission's mandate is going to be terminated reportedly. Uh, mandate extension is under consideration. Uh, Ethiopian government has been opposing the extension in the mandate of the commission from day one. Government has been opposing the formation of the commission. Eriti opposing too. Uh, African countries opposing to Tigray largely silent. Tigray knows that uh, this commission will hold ENDF accountable to Tigray fighters accountable to. So Tigray wants investigation only against Eritrean military. So this commission is bound to be terminated today or tomorrow. I don't think West and US are relying on the report of this commission to charge Sasevoki or Eritrean military at International Criminal Court. Only possibility of a regime change in Eritrea is indirect. Indirect means through a neighboring country, through the involvement of a neighboring country. That is the only viable option if Western powers manage to get the support of a neighboring country. But no neighboring country is in a position to support, to back full-fledged regime change operation from its soil into Eritrea. Yes, Ethiopia has some problem with Eritrea. Since last night, we have been hearing again rumors, uh, not rumors, propaganda launched by some journalists who say that PM Abi at a meeting in Adama said that he wanted to uh, make Eritrea part of Ethiopia. Propaganda, again propaganda. I don't think PM Abi uh, would say something like this at a meeting with Prosperity Party leaders. Again propaganda. So, yes, Ethiopia has some problems with Eritrea. Main problem, access to port. Ethiopia at any cost wants access to ports. Eritrea, ports in Eritrea, Djibouti, Kenya, Somaliland. Ethiopia in talks, that is a matter of survival for Ethiopia. Ethiopian economy uh, cannot flourish if it remains dependent on just Djibouti's ports. Djibouti keeps on blackmailing Ethiopia. So yes, Ethiopia wants access to Eritrean ports too. It does not mean Ethiopia wants to go to war with Eritrea. Though some groups in Ethiopia, they want Ethiopia to start a war with Eritrea because they know that if Abi and Esaias are involved in a war, these groups in Ethiopia will be the beneficiary. 
groups in Amhara region, maybe groups in Tigray too, uh, they uh, would want a direct confrontation between PM Abi and Isa Sevoki. PM Abi not interested. Yes, he's building pressure. Why? Because he wants access to ports. He is not making any preparations for war against Eritrea. Eritrea does not want to be involved in internal Ethiopian conflicts at this point of time. It's watching the developments very closely. Eritrea Ethiopia relations not very ideal these days, but we cannot say Eritrea is working to destabilize Ethiopia. So I don't think Ethiopia will agree for a regime change operation in Eritrea through its soil. Sudan volatile situation there. Al Burhan is bagging Esasavoki. That Esasavoki should recognize Burhan's government in Port Sudan. Djibouti, as I said earlier, won't be part of any regime change operation. Same is the case with uh, Somalia, has uh, limited jurisdiction in terms of control over its territory. So I don't think that any Eritrean neighbor would support regime change operation practically in Eritrea. That is why I, I conclude that the uh, claims being made, propaganda being spread by Eritrean government, pro Eritrean government elements that Western powers are working on regime change in Eritrea is false. It's not correct. West, yes, West would like to change the government in Eritrea if it could. It is not in a position. And the way Eritrea has taken sides with Russia and China, it is becoming increasingly difficult for West and US to uh, consider direct regime change in Eritrea or indirect too. So that is why West and US are now backing Eritrean opposition groups. They're trying to hurt Eritrea abroad. They know they cannot reach Eritrea. So that is my understanding of the situation. I don't think any uh, Western US plan to change government in Eritrea is in the making. Eritrea just wants to prove that it is strong. It wants to prove to its critics, to its supporters, that it's very strong, that entire world is against Eritrea. Entire world wants to remove Isasevaki, but Eritrean government is self-sufficient. It can defend its territorial sovereignty. So they want to just create this false impression. Otherwise, I don't think any serious regime change efforts are under. Thank you for watching.